This section examines engine and transmission configurations. An engine can be located at the front, middle, or rear of a vehicle. An engine located at the front can be mounted longitudinally and can drive either the front or the rear wheels. In four-wheel drive applications, it can drive both the front and rear wheels. Alternatively, the engine can be transverse and drive either the front wheels only or in four-wheel drive applications, the front and rear wheels. Mid-engine vehicles have the engine in front of the rear wheels. The engine can be transverse or longitudinal and usually drives the rear wheels only. Rear engine vehicles have the engine mounted behind the rear wheels. The engine can be transverse or longitudinal and usually drives the rear wheels only. The drivetrain transfers turning effort from the engine to the driving wheels. A drivetrain can include a clutch for manual transmission or a torque converter for automatic transmission. A transmission, a drive shaft, final drive, and differential gears, and driving axles. Alternatively, a transaxle may be used. A transaxle is a self contained unit with the transmission, final drive gears, and differential located in one casing. It is usually used on front-engined, front-wheel drive vehicles or rear-engined, rear-wheel drive vehicles. It can also be used on front-engine, rear-wheel drive vehicles connected to the engine by a propeller shaft. Gross vehicle mass of a goods carrying commercial vehicle is the sum of its tear mass and the mass of goods the vehicle can safely carry in accordance with its design specifications. Tear mass is determined by weighing the unladen vehicle on suitable vehicle scales. It is a legal requirement that this value, together with gross vehicle mass, be registered on the vehicle chassis frame. On an articulated vehicle, the combined mass of the prime mover and the semi-trailer must be registered. This is called the Registered Gross Combination Mass, or RGCM. The location of the driving axle determines whether the vehicle is classified as rear-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or all-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive vehicles can use a conventional layout with the engine at the front of the vehicle. The torque from the engine is transmitted to the rear-mounted driving axle by propeller or drive shaft. This spreads the weight of components throughout the vehicle. This rear-wheel drive vehicle has the engine at the rear driving the wheels through a combination transmission and rear axle called a transaxle. The transaxle is lighter than a separate transmission and rear axle. Moving the engine to the rear allows a lower bonnet line which improves aerodynamics. The increase in weight over the rear wheels can improve their traction. This vehicle has the engine located behind the operator's cabin but forward of the rear driving axle. This is called a mid-engine rear-wheel drive vehicle. A mid-engine design locates the mass of the engine behind the driver but forward of the rear axle. This allows for a low bonnet profile and good handling. Most goods carrying rigid commercial vehicles locate the engine near the front and drive the rear axle by a two-piece propeller shaft. The rear axle supports most of the goods or payload. Many buses commonly locate the engine at the front of the vehicle, beneath the operator's cabin, and drive the rear axle by a propeller shaft.
Larger buses and coaches locate the engine at the rear. This allows the vehicle to have a low floor and removes much of the noise and vibration from the passenger compartment. Front wheel drive vehicles use the front wheels to pull the vehicle along. In light passenger vehicles, it gives lighter body weight and increased interior room. The engine and transaxle are at the front and can be mounted laterally, that is, the engine is parallel to the front axle. Or longitudinally, where the engine is in line with the center line of the vehicle. Make a list of current vehicles and classify them according to whether they are rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, four wheel drive or all wheel drive. A vehicle with a manual transmission uses a clutch to engage and disengage the engine from the drivetrain. Engine torque is transmitted through the clutch to the transmission or transaxle. The transmission contains sets of gears that increase or decrease the torque before it is transmitted to the rest of the drivetrain. The lower the gear ratio selected, the higher the torque transmitted. A vehicle starting from rest needs a lot of torque, but once it's moving, it can maintain speed with only a relatively small amount of torque. A higher gear ratio can then be selected and engine speed reduced. A conventional vehicle with the engine at the front and driving wheels at the rear uses a drive shaft called a propeller shaft to transmit torque from the transmission to the final drive. The final drive provides a final gear reduction to multiply the torque before applying it to the driving axles. On front engine rear wheel drive vehicles, the final drive changes the direction of the drive by 90 degrees. Inside the final drive, a differential gear set divides the torque to the axles and allows for the difference in speed of each wheel when cornering. Commercial vehicles may use a two-speed final drive. The low range provides more torque for lower speeds and heavy loads. High range is used for higher speeds and light loads. Axle shafts transmit the torque to the driving wheels. In a rear wheel drive vehicle, the axles can be solid or contain joints to allow for movement of the suspension. For a front wheel drive vehicle, the drive shaft has universal joints to allow for suspension and steering movement. An automatic transmission or transaxle performs similar functions to a manual transmission or transaxle, except that gear selection is controlled either hydraulically or electronically. The automatic transmission uses a torque converter, which acts as a hydraulic coupling to transfer the drive. Vehicles can be described by the number of axles. Most light vehicles only have two axles. This vehicle has four wheels but only two driving wheels. This one has four driving wheels and is commonly called a four-wheel drive vehicle. On commercial vehicles, the load carried on a single axle is limited by law. So vehicles with extra axles are common. This layout has six wheels to support the vehicle, but only two drive it. The extra axle at the rear is only used to support the weight of the vehicle. This extra axle is sometimes called a lazy axle. This is called a six by two vehicle. If the lazy axle is changed to a driving axle, this becomes a six by four vehicle. Some heavy goods vehicles have an extra steering axle, which allows more weight to be carried. Find five vehicles with different numbers of axles and describe how they are used.
A four-wheel drive vehicle has a propeller shaft, a final drive and differential gears, and axles for both the front and rear axle assemblies. A transfer case is attached to the transmission. Part-time four-wheel drive means the vehicle is usually in two-wheel drive and switch to full-time when needed by engaging the transfer case. It locks the propeller shafts together and directs torque through them to both axles. When disengaged, the vehicle transfer case is coupled to one propeller shaft only. When four-wheel drive is disengaged, most part-time four-wheel drive vehicles drive the rear wheels. Constant four-wheel drive uses a third differential in the transfer case. It allows for the difference in speed between the front and rear wheels during cornering. The driver can still lock the front and rear axles together by moving a separate lever as in a conventional four-wheel drive or by moving the main gear selector. This is called a differential lock. Some full-time four-wheel drive sedans use a front engine and transaxle with a propeller shaft connected to drive the rear wheels. These cars are lighter and less rugged than conventional off-road types and usually operate at higher speeds. The drive to all wheels provides better balanced handling and traction for cornering in slippery conditions. This section examines steering systems. The direction of motion of a motor vehicle is controlled by a steering system. A basic steering system has three main parts. A steering box connected to the steering wheel. The linkage connecting the steering box to the wheel assemblies at the front wheels and front suspension parts to let the wheel assemblies pivot. When the driver turns the steering wheel, a shaft from the steering column turns a steering gear. The steering gear moves tie rods that connect to the front wheels. The tie rods move the front wheels to turn the vehicle right or left. There are two basic types of steering boxes those with rack and pinion gearing and those with worm gearing. In both cases the gearing in the steering box makes it easier for the driver to turn the steering wheel and hence the wheels. A rack and pinion steering system has a steering wheel, a main shaft, universal joints and an intermediate shaft. When the steering is turned, movement is transferred by the shafts to the pinion. The pinion is meshed with the teeth of the rack, so pinion rotation moves the rack from side to side. This type of steering is used on passenger vehicles because it is light and direct. This steering system has worm gearing. It provides a gear reduction and a 90 degree change in direction. It has more parts and joints than the rack type, but it is more robust and may be used on heavier vehicles. To allow the heavy transport vehicles to carry extra weight, two steering axles may be used. They're connected by a link to a common steering box. These vehicles are called tandem or twin steered vehicles. Some passenger vehicles also steer the rear wheels slightly. This gives improved maneuverability. The system is known as four-wheel steering. It can be controlled mechanically through a direct connection between the front and rear steering boxes. Or it can be computer controlled. With heavier vehicles, increased use of front wheel drive and wider low profile tires, more steering effort is needed so power steering is used. An engine driven hydraulic pump provides pressure that helps the driver steer the vehicle. 
The power steering system is designed so that the vehicle can still be controlled, even if the engine or the power steering system fails. This section examines suspension systems. The purpose of the complete suspension system is to isolate the vehicle body from road shocks and vibrations, which would otherwise be transferred to the passengers and load. It must also keep the tyres in contact with the road, regardless of road surface. A basic suspension system consists of springs, axles, shock absorbers, arms, rods, and ball joints. The spring is the flexible component of the suspension. Basic types are leaf springs, coil springs, and torsion bars. Modern passenger vehicles usually use light coil springs. Light commercial vehicles have heavier springs than passenger vehicles and can have coil springs at the front and leaf springs at the rear. Heavy commercial vehicles usually use leaf springs or air suspension. Solid or beam axles connect the wheels on each side of the vehicle. This means the movement of a wheel on one side of the vehicle is transferred to the wheel on the other side. With independent suspension, the wheels can move independently of each other, which reduces body movement. This prevents the other wheel being affected by movement of the wheel on the opposite side, and this reduces body movement. When a wheel strikes a bump, there is a reaction force, and energy is transferred to the spring which makes it oscillate. Oscillations left uncontrolled can cause loss of traction between the wheel and the road surface. Shock absorbers dampen spring oscillations by forcing oil through small holes. The oil heats up as it absorbs the energy of the motion. This heat is then transferred through the body of the shock absorber to the air. When a vehicle hits an obstruction, the size of the reaction force depends on how much unsprung mass is at each wheel assembly. Sprung mass refers to those parts of the vehicle supported on the springs. This includes the body, the frame, the engine and associated parts. Unsprung mass includes the wheels, tires, brake assemblies and suspension parts not supported by the springs. Vehicle ride and handling is improved by keeping unsprung mass as low as possible. Wheel and brake units that are small and light follow the road contours without a large effect on the rest of the vehicle. Discover five current vehicles that use five different suspension systems.